Hey, what's up, Ram Nation? We are back here for another edition of Ramsports.net Ram Talk here. Beside me is my assistant, Cameron Irvine. I'm Ryan Keating, and we're going to talk today to head women's basketball coach and associate athletic director for equity and compliance, Coach Steve Tratcher. Steve, how you doing? Doing great, guys. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. Fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Good. Steve is just got done, or Coach Tratcher just got done with his third season as head women's basketball coach after taking the reins from Bill Franey. Um, last season, he improved on his first season, and, and this past season, 2019 and 2020, um, the women's basketball team improved again. So uh, some good things happening there. In his seven years as athletic director, Steve uh, built a tremendous um, uh, record, particularly in, in a- athletics uh, on the academic side. Um, and under his guidance, the Rams produced 100 NAIA scholar athletes, which is uh, a, a big number. Um, and in 2015 and 16, that number was 26 in a school record, 26 NAIA All-American scholar, scholar athletes. Um, and in addition to that, the department saw 51 All-American selections and 198 All-Conference athletes during his tenure as athletic director. He was also a big part of uh, spearheading the return of football after a 75-year hiatus. Steve came to Texas Wesleyan uh, after serving as a, in public education as a teacher and a coach and uh, an administrator. Um, he served in the Grapevine Collierville Independent School District as, a, as the executive director for secondary administration. And now he's here, and we're, gra- we're glad to have him. He's, a, he's been a great asset to the department. And uh, we'll get right into these questions here. Steve, what going from athletic director to head coach, what is the – Sorry, excuse me, going from athletic director and coach in the college arena, what has been the biggest um, difference to you from high school to college? Well, the players are certainly a lot better. And the men's game is different than the women's game. The women's game is played below the rim, and the men's game is played above. But basketball is basketball. You know, I was out of coaching for a long time. You know, like everybody, you know, I had concerns. Has the game changed? And, uh, to the point where I can't coach it, but I just found out that the game is exactly the same. Some of the rules have changed, but the strategies are the same, and the types of things that you do in terms of mechanics are all the same. So it wasn't as hard a transition as I thought it might be. So it, it's been a really, really good experience for me. I've enjoyed it. Good. good. What, what type of culture do you try to build in the women's basketball program? Well, you know, first of all, it better be a culture of going to class. You know, we are, our core business at the university level is education. You know, I tell every recruit that we have that we are about school. School comes first 100% of the time. If you're not here for school, you're wasting your time and you're wasting our time. Uh, because uh, in terms of culture, the culture I want is you're going to walk across the stage and the president's going to hand you a diploma. Uh, that is our culture. Now, beyond that, you know, in terms of basketball, You know, I I want to have a culture of work ethic. I want kids that want to work hard. I want kids that want to be good. You know, I tell our recruits all the time, you know, if if I have to motivate you, I've got the wrong kid. Because coaches can rah-rah a little bit and temporarily motivate. But in terms of just becoming good, it has to be individual self-motivation. So I guess that's kind of what I would want for in a culture, uh, a culture of, the team caring for each other and supporting each other and with a common goal and just wanting to be good. Good. Okay. So you've been with Texas Wesleyan for a while and you've seen, um, I guess you've had a, a more of a higher vaulted view of the athletic department. What, what is, what is Texas Wesleyan's competitive advantage? Uh, Texas Wesleyan is an institution and Texas Wesleyan Athletics, what, what gets the recruits to say, oh, yeah, that's the place for me? Well, it's individual relationships. You know, and that's, that's, it's a challenge right now 
recruiting players because all of our contact is telephone contact, it's internet contact, it's not face-to-face. So I think what we have here is an advantage, and we have a lot of successful programs, a lot. But it's because of the individuals who are coaching those programs. They make those connections with the kids and with the parents, and there's a level of trust. And, and I've always felt if we can get a kid to our campus to meet us and have a look around, they will have a comfort level with it. They will fall in love with it. Uh, it doesn't hurt that we're in Fort Worth. You know, a lot of our competitors are in smaller uh, rural areas. Um, but it's nice to have Fort Worth as a drawing card. But the bottom line is it still boils down to those interpersonal connections that you have with the kids and with their families. Yeah, and, you know, you as an individual, you've helped me personally along just mentoring, being next door in the office. I can come in and and talk to you whenever I want. I've also seen that from from a lot of the other coaches uh, in the department. Uh, You seem like... You're the guy to go to that kind of has, kind of has the answer. So um, I, I'm sure it's a it's a, a good honor to be coached by you. Uh, well, I don't know if my kids would say it's an honor to be coached by me. <laughs> I hope that they've enjoyed the experience. So. You have a lot of wisdom to share, Coach, and and uh, and I like to tap into that wisdom a lot. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. All right, Coach, talk us through the process of of getting a, a high school senior student athlete ready to compete in both the classroom and the court um, from a women's basketball perspective. Yeah. Um, the the move from the high school level to the collegiate level is a tough one for all freshmen. And you name your sport, it's tough for all of them. You know, the, the rigor of the classroom and the rigor of the sport are at a level that they have not experienced before. And, and most high school athletes, were stars on their team. You know, they were they were the go-to players. They were the big dogs at their school. And then when they come to this level, some of them are just blown away about how good everybody is. And for basketball, moving from high school to college, it's just getting used to the speed of the game. It's so much faster. The athletes are so much better. Shots that you could take in high school, you can't take at the collegiate level because the closeouts are so fast and, and the defenders are just that good. So it's it's a big step. And, and you could say the same in the classroom. You know, the expectations at our university academically are high and it requires a lot of work. And, you know, it depends on the individual kid. We've had some kids that have come in right away. Uh, Michaela Coy came in last year as a freshman, and she adapted to the speed of the game right away. She's not a, she's not the greatest athlete we have, but you know she had great coaching uh, in high school, and the speed of the game did not intimidate her. Nor did the workload in the classroom. Good, strong, solid student. Not everybody's like Michaela. Some kids come in and they do fine on the floor, but they struggle in the classroom. Some kids come in and they can do the classroom, but boy, they just can't get used to the speed of the game. It just is not clicking for them. It's a tough transition, but it's not just at Wesleyan. It's any level you go to, it's that way. And that's really why the industry standard in football is the redshirt freshman men. You know, they have to come in first and kind of get used to the classroom and then get in the weight room and get prepared to play the collegiate game because it is so different than anything they've ever done. So those are the things that that we try to help kids with, and it works for some, it doesn't work for all. Coach, do you you find that uh, great uh, or, you know, above average high school coaching, how much of a difference does it make with, let's take two two athletes that are of similar uh, ilk, right? They're, they're, They're very similar players. How much of a difference does this does player A have if they've had significantly better coaching, um, you know, before they get to you? Oh, I think it's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, you know, you would think that anybody coming from a good high school program, they would come in with all the prerequisite skills to be a good player. 
But it always amazes me fundamentally how far behind some of the kids are and concepts that they don't understand. And, I, you know, there are some people that believe if they don't understand it by the time they're at our level, you can't fix it. And there might be some truth to that. I don't know. I, I find that I spend a lot of my time trying to teach kids the game. And uh, that takes a lot of practice time away trying to get them to understand everything about the game. Uh, but that's our, that's our chore. And uh, I think everybody at every level goes through that. It's a process. Uh, and, and the ones that pick it up quicker are the best. Some come in and they're intuitively good. You know, nobody taught them how to go get the ball, how to go get a rebound. Nobody taught them how to do that. They just could do it and they're good at it. So we get a mixed bag. We get some players that come in that are really, really good at certain things. And, uh, but in truth, I've had very few complete basketball players at this level. You know, they're good in one end of the floor, maybe not both ends, or they're pretty good. Or Bottom line is, like a coach, there's tons of things I can improve on. There are tons of things the players can improve on every day. How would you describe your transition from athletic director to women's basketball coach? Was there any relief in uh, uh, getting to say it's not my problem? <laughs> oh, there's a ton of relief in that. You know, there are some things, you know, that are beyond your control. And it's sort of frustrating when you're in a situation and you can't control things. Well, I had no control of the budget as an athletic director or enrollment or things like that. And uh, though I enjoyed it and I enjoy that work quite a bit, um, it's not as fun as coaching. And I, I told the president when I wanted to move into coaching that I got into coaching because I wanted, I, I loved it. I love the relationships with the kids. Uh, I enjoyed the total experience. But as a professional, you find yourself sometimes moving away from the things in life that you love the most to provide for your family. Like a lot of coaches in my era, I moved out of coaching and moved into administration. And I've sort of came full circle. I, I told the president and, and Fred Slabach is a wonderful man. He was very understanding about what I wanted to do and why, and he allowed me to do it. So I told him I wanted to finish my last few years uh, being with kids again. You, you mentioned how fun it is for you. What uh, what does Coach Tratcher do when he's not coaching? What, what's what's fun with you outside of uh, Texas Wesleyan's campus? Oh, my gosh. I just, uh, well, we, we like to travel. My wife and I like to travel in our motor home. We're motorcycle riders. Uh, there's no need to ask what kind. It's a Harley Davidson because if you're not on a Harley, you're not on a motorcycle. My wife has her own Harley Davidson, and we've been blessed. We've uh, actually ridden our motorcycles in all 50 states and wow. parts of Canada. Wow! And um, so it's it's been a wonderful life. And those are the types of things that I like to do. I like to be outdoors. I like to do things. I don't like to sit still. I don't understand why anybody would ever retire. Uh, I can't get my head around that because I can't get a, my head around not doing something. So those are the kind of things I do. I'm, and of course, I'm watching game film every day, all day. <laughs> and there's, I'd rather watch game film than watch Netflix. Well, that's a mark of a true coach, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I guess I don't know. Uh, talk about talk a little bit about your uh, assistant coaches' uh, per uh, personalities and strongest traits. You, you have a, um, a young assistant coach in Chardonnay Fuqua who uh, mm -hmm. is a couple years removed from playing at Baylor University, where she led her team to a Big Twelve regular season championship, multiple Big Twelve regular season championships. And then you have you brought back on the former head coach uh, Bill Franey, uh, who's probably acting more as a little bit of an on, on volunteer basis but he can't he he's got to get his his paws in and uh in all the coaching aspects as well talk a little bit about those two well uh chardonnay uh is a an outgoing vibrant energetic polished young woman and uh high energy goofy you know the kids like her a lot uh, and it was a tough transition for her in the sense that when you come from Baylor where there's only winning, 
and you come to a place where you have to climb your way up the food chain, uh, that's a different experience. And uh, also, it's just a different level of athlete. You know, the truth is, if, if you play at Baylor, you're you're world class. You're you're in the the upper 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 echelon of athletic ability and talent. <clears throat> at our level, we have to develop talent, and so those are some of the things that she had to kind of work through as a coach, and she's done a really good job of that. Uh, coach Franey, he's a he's a different kind of animal. And I've known Bill for, gosh, well over 20 years. And uh, he has forgotten more basketball than I'll ever know. Uh, but he is just a wealth of experience. And I've learned a lot from Bill, mostly bad language and where the best bartenders are. But uh, he is, he's taught me a lot. And, uh, but, uh, you know, you probably, as my next door neighbor, you've heard the conversations we have all the time. And we had butt quite a bit. And we're both opinionated and. Uh, both feel free to just say what's on our mind, but uh, you know, there's not a day that goes by I talk to Bill every day. I've talked to Bill every day for 20 years, and, and we'll always do that. He's a great guy, and just uh, he, he's just tremendously knowledgeable about the sport. Yeah, that's great, and, and and really cares about student athletes as well. I mean, you can see it whenever you talk to him, whenever you see him coach, the way he approaches the game. He's a great guy. Uh, coach, absolutely. What's uh, what frustrates you the most as a coach? What's your pet peeve? Oh, lack of effort. You know, just lack of effort. You know, uh, uh, Vince Lombardi used to say that fatigue makes cowards of us all. And I, I like to be, I like to have players that are conditioned, and they are they are running to the last second of the game. And again, it's an individual thing. We've got some players that will not be outworked. And we got players that just do enough. <clears throat> so in terms of my pet peeve as a coach, it's the players that just do enough. Because I see potential that's undeveloped. And the only thing stopping the development of that potential is the individual themselves. You know, the ones that will make that extra effort, the ones that will work hard all of the time, it's amazing that good things happen for them. And uh, the ones that just do enough to get by, they just... They could be great. It's just not in them to work that hard. So undeveloped talent and lack of effort are kind of my two biggest pet peeves. And if you don't get back on defense, you're not going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, what, is the, what are the best, uh, best and worst aspects of operating in the NAIA? Yeah, uh, the best aspects, I think, are being able to talk to and recruit players year-round. Now, the NCAA has viewing periods and, and times when they can talk to athletes and times that they can't. And I think our national office is cognizant of that. And they understand that because we don't have the brand recognition that the NCAA has, that we need that little extra edge to help bring in kids. So... The flip side to that is that most high school kids are really familiar with the NCAA and they're familiar with the schools in the NCAA and they are enamored by the thought of playing in the NCAA. And we talk to them about the NAI, for some reason they think it's an inferior brand of ball. Even though last year, you know, we take one of the top D2 programs in the country to overtime. We play a D1 program, and they beat us with a lucky shot at the end of the game, or we would have beat a D1 program. It's not inferior basketball. It's just names you're not familiar with. So when you tell your friends, I play at this school or that school, you know, it, it's interesting in that they may not recognize them because they're an NAI program. I was watching, and you guys might have too, this, uh, uh, this documentary on the Chicago Bulls in their last run to the championship, and they're talking about Scotty Pippen, Pippen playing at University of Central Arkansas, which is an NAI school. It's now D1, but when he played, it was NAI. There's just tremendous talent at our level, just at schools that most people have never heard of because the media does not cover the NAI. Right. Coach, uh, 
if you could have, you've been the athletic director here, you've been the women's basketball coach here, uh, what else would you like to do here? Uh, what, what, whose job would you like to take a stab at in a world where, uh, you know, you didn't necessarily have to know much about anything to get it? And if you love golf, you can't say men's golf. <laughs> Well, that takes away the only, only other thing. I, do. <laughs> I don't want y'all's jobs. I, I can tell you, you guys, you never have a day off. You never have a holiday. You just, uh, you guys never stop working. So I don't want that. But uh, that's not fair to say you can't do golf because that's the only other thing I'd rather do. I don't know how to do anything else. And I'm not a good golfer, but I can sure get out there and just enjoy watching it on a nice day. Fair enough, right. coach. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you slide with the with the golf. Yeah, <laughs> it's too good to pass up, right? Yeah. Um, coach, uh, did did you ever did you ever play basketball back in the day? No, I, did, I did not play basketball in high school. I was a football player, and oh. uh, where I went to high school, if you didn't play football, that was the only sport. And you got to understand, it was a long time ago uh, in an era where. Uh, the only time a football was ever thrown was because your running back was too tired to carry the ball. And that's the type of football I grew up with. And I, my intention was to be the next Tom Landry. Uh, <laughs> when I graduated from college, I went to a small uh, rural cotton farming community. And uh, they said, you're the junior varsity basketball coach. Well, I didn't know anything about basketball. So I had to learn. And uh, the first season I coached, I was just drugged. It was miserable. And I thought, I'm never going through that again. So I just started learning about the game. And then I fell in love with the game. It's just amazing. Uh, but no, I did not play when I was young. How, how, do, you, uh, how do you take uh, Coach Fuqua's playing experience? And how do you, how do you morph that into uh, putting yourself in the shoes of, of the athletes of a sport that you didn't play. I mean, I'm sure it gives you some advantages and disadvantages that other people, most coaches don't have. Well, it, when I say I didn't play, I didn't play organized basketball in high school. I played basketball all the time. Sure. I played pickup ball as a kid all through high school with guys on the football team, all through college and intramurals. And, and most people thought that I'd played it at a you know, high level of, of high school basketball. I, I never did. So it's not that I didn't understand things about the game. I was pretty intuitive at it, and I understand understood aspects of the game uh, relative to positioning on the floor and, and defensive mechanics and things nobody ever taught me. I just kind of knew how to do. Uh, I was lucky that way. Uh, Coach Fook was the same way. I mean, you know, the, the really good athletes were always good at it. And they may have had good coaching, but the bottom line is, you know, uh, you know, if, if there's not something to work with, you can't coach it into it. You know, you can either play or you can't. And, uh, you know, her challenge is to take the things that she knows and then transfer that knowledge to the players. So the hardest part, I believe, is the communication piece where you can articulate what you want done. You can tell them, you can show them, you can re repeat it, you can try to get them to understand it. But it's the communication piece that's the biggest challenge. And coaches who don't communicate well with the players usually are not successful coaches. Coach, you mentioned taking the motorcycle uh, through all 50 states, doing all the travel, doing all those, those things like that. Um, where would you say is the, the most beautiful place you've ever driven through or driven to or... You know, is there a place where you say, golly, that was just that was just the best thing I've ever seen? Well, again, we've, we've been very blessed. And I can tell you that there are so many uh, amazing things to see in our country that there's not one you can point to that just sticks out the most. Because there are so many places you go to that leave you in awe. You know, you go to the Grand Canyon, you go to Yellowstone, you go to Glacier, Glacier Park up in Montana. Uh, we've watched fireworks over the Niagara Falls on the 4th of July. I mean, we've just seen and done so many amazing things. It's almost, a, it's an embarrassment. So I can only tell you that there's been so many things that have just taken my breath away completely that I've been blown away by that I can tell you which one was the best. Uh, we're fortunate. We are blessed to live in this country. 
And uh, so I believe that next summer, uh, my wife and I are going to do the, the old European thing. We're going to try to do six weeks in Europe next year. Uh, but we made a commitment to see our own country before we started you know, spreading our wings and going other places. What's, what's taken your breath away since you're, you started coaching at Texas Wesleyan? Bad defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I, you know, the Texas Wesleyan is just the, it's home. It's it's just hard to describe how you can come to a little place in Southeast Fort Worth and you walk in and everything just feels good. The people are just the best people in the world to work with, and and that's why you you see. The continuity in coaching at Texas Wesleyan that you don't see in other institutions similar to ours. It's a revolving door of coaching in other places. Our coaches come here, and it feels good. They want to stay. There's not a one of them that couldn't make more money somewhere else. You guys could do that. You guys could work anywhere else and make more money. But there's something to be said about being with people that you care for and that care for you, and it feels like home. Could have said yeah, I totally about- agree. The, the, the whole unexplainable aspect of, 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 yeah, the only way to describe it is, is just it feels like home, and, and it's a, it just feels good. And, and you're well, exactly I think right. our athletes have the same experience. You know, we get transfer athletes that come in, and they've been at places where it just wasn't working for them. They come in, and at first, they look at it, and it's just a little smaller, a little different, and then they just fall in love with it. And uh, I've seen that over and over. Uh, Texas Wesleyan is a very special place. Well, Coach, it's been a, it's been a great honor to talk to you today. I hope all the family is doing well, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get to see you uh, in person here soon. And uh, hopefully after this uh, coronavirus thing dies down really quickly over the summer and uh thank you thank you for coming on and talking with us no no no. i appreciate it appreciate everything everything you guys do you guys are just tremendous so thank you guys and and stay safe and god bless you all right ram nation we'll see you next time on ramsports.net ram talk